I'm Liv Kenya and my friends and I are traveling from Nairobi, Kenya all the way to Cape Town, South Africa. You're using the garden route using this car. This is our story. Welcome back to my channel. We are on our second leg of our trip. We are doing a road trip from South Africa back to Kenya. Good morning from Vinduk. It's a bright morning as you can see. <laughs> the sun is out so early. It's hardly, it's like 7.30 and you can see the sun is so hot. The heat and the sun in Namibia are just on another level. But we are getting used to it. Today our plan for the day is to go to Swakomund. And everyone has been recommending that we go there. It's only that we felt like we did not have much time. But since everyone is like, you guys have to go there, you guys have to go there, we just decided that we are going there. We've done some research here and there of things to do in that place. Yesterday we did a brief tour of the city before we got, uh, we met a Kenyan. <laughs> Moses, he's a very interesting guy. Hey, he's treated us properly. He gave us a Kenyan welcome. You know Kenyan welcome? had a, a royal treatment. We even got to meet uh, one of the of the people who work in the Kenyan consulate. I will not mention the name because they prefer not to be mentioned. It was good vibes and they have a Kenyan community in Namibia so if you will ever if you're a Kenyan and you will ever you, all, you ever wish to come to Namibia there is a whole community. Like an organization you know nowadays in Kenya foreign is it foreign affair? Diaspora is actually a department on its own, so they, they, they are really doing something. They are really doing something to bring Kenyans in diaspora together. And it was just amazing meeting so many Kenyans. We did not meet one Kenyan, we met so many Kenyans. Some of them would not like to be, to be seen on the camera, so we'll keep their privacy that way, but it was A1. Good, good interactions. As we head towards Swagomon, almost 400 kilometers away, and we are supposed to go and return. So you can imagine the amount of task we have. We have just a few hours there. We just have a few hours there and we intend to utilize it to the maximum. So guys, stay tuned. There will be some awesome content coming through and let's go to Sogomo. So 
So from the moment you cross over to Namibia, please turn on your fog light. It's just part of it's part of driving in Namibia. It's for safety reasons and it's also I think something they just, they just do. So the poli the police check was just to ensure that I have a driving a valid driving license and and uh, our passports are also we have like the entry stamp. So that was all. This is our first encounter with the police in Namibia. We've not seen a, we've not had any encounter with the police before the border. Like after the border, we've not had any other encounter. In fact, we even we, yesterday and the day before we drove at night up to around midnight and we not we not see any police anywhere. So I can safely say Namibia is a safe country for sure. So far we've crossed around five rivers and they're all dry. So the rivers around this place I believe they are seasonal rivers. Kids just want to turn up. So bad. Tea break. Everyone else in the car is full apart from me. So I'm having my tea break. It's one of those resting places. There's a you see? Yeah, I mean, there's another driver there. So, drivers in, in, in the southern part of Africa. Even Namibia, people drive at a very high speed. At times, you, I'm driving at 120 and people just pass me. You will think that I'm, I'm not driving, like I'm, I've just stopped the car on the road. I don't know what speeds those people drive at, but everyone understands their car, you know. And I understand my potential. 120. It's good for me. Beyond that, mm -mm. let's just stay safe. <laughs> I have a long way to go and home is far, far, far away. I've realized that uh, the road from Vios Drift, Vios yeah. Drift to the capital city, Vintuk, the road there is, it's not, it does not have portals. Some parts of it is like smoothly tarmacked. Some part of it is still a bit bumpy. I think it will need some repair here and there. But we assume that maybe because of the of the heat, the road tends to to get spoiled very fast. But the road was not smooth that smooth. But this one from from the capital city, from Vintu all the way to Swakomund, but as in so far, very good road, very very good road. It's smooth. And I think it's properly maintained. I don't know if it's because of tourism or what, but it's very, very good road. But the other one, I, I was worried. Everyone else who told us that the road in Namibia was better than South Africa, and then we were like, ah, the road is not does not have potholes. Some parts are smooth, but eh, other parts, eh, no, 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 no. It's not potholes, it's just a bit bumpy. We've not come across any Subaru in Namibia so far. And everywhere, everywhere we pass, people are just standing to look at that car. Like, what, what, which kind of a car is that? Yes, no, Subaru is the unique car on the road. <laughs> In fact, there was a driver who had to stop us, and then he told us, "You have a very nice car. Hey, how much? How much can I get it at? Just sell it to me." <laughs> when you come here, just expect that if you want to service your car, your, your Subaru car. In Namibia, you'll also have the same problem we had in South Africa. It's not a very popular... Is it really popular? It's not a very common car around here. We've literally seen no...
bar on this road. It's like in the Namibian roads, like at all. So have that in mind, but at least it'll be the only car on the road, the only Subaru car on the road. Uh, also, I think the number plates, the number plates also could create, uh, could, could um, attract some attention because everyone wants to know where we come from. And if, whenever we tell them our story, they usually, you mean you guys drop all the way? Why couldn't you just get a flight and just, it could save you a lot of time and money and then we're like, trust me, driving is not cheap, any cheaper. So if you see me driving, just know the flight is not, it's just a passion that I like, I, I have, and the flight is not more expensive than the car, it is not, it is not. That is the truth. So there are people who just like to fly in and do whatever they want and go back. Because some of us want to have the full experience. That is why we do the road trip. We want to have the full experience of the roads, villages. We want to see how the villages look like. We want to see how the settlements look like. Where is the river? How do the people live? How do their towns look like? It's, it's quite... For those people who love adventure, next time you, you are thinking that people who are driving uh, are uh, that driving is a cheaper way. It is a cheaper way if you do your math properly, but at the same time, it's not always that cheap. We just like road trips, and that's all. Kabib town is a town in the Irongo region of western Namibia. It has 3,800 inhabitants and is situated in the area around Han River. Kabib is halfway between Vintuk and Swakomund. We made a quick stop to stretch our legs and exchange drivers.
I had been sleeping and then just seven kilometers before Swakomund, we got like a gathering of people. It's like some sort of sensitization. Now the police stopped us. There were, there were, there were many police cars. I think even there is uh, defense forces there. They stopped us for a check. Never seen such a thorough check. Thank God we had left some of our clothes in uh, Vindu. Otherwise, they were checking everything, every bag. Like the, we have some few bags here that we had left in the book and even the, the sweaters, some heavy stuff because we were told that in Sokom, weather changes like one minute it could be. You could experience four seasons in one day. Even some people are being told to remove shoes. Yeah, they were searching literally everywhere. People are being told to remove their shoes, Imagine the socks, like the, the way they do it in airports. You see even your neck pillow, they tell you to open it. You, you see, if, especially those the ones that have a zip, you need to open it. I don't know exactly what they were looking for, there but... There are so many police cars and uh, too many, in fact, government organizations. They, they, were like, uh, they were like, I don't know, seven motos, motorbikes. Ten police, police. There are so many cars. Like more than twenty cars are there. People were like, "What? What Even would they be searching?" Oh, they were customs. Yes. They were plain clothes policemen, the military, the the military, military there, police, the road, road, road safety. Oh, road. Oh, the where we were, the, the department where we went to pay them out. Yes, they were still there. Yeah. The, the traffic police were also there. So we so saw the one police would ask you for this, the other enforcement officer asks you for this, but they were searching all cars. Hey. Come to Sokopolis. Well, that was something else. So beware of that. Don't carry anything illegal or something you cannot explain. officially in Swakomund and we want to do a tour of the city there are so many things to see mostly architectural so we, if we'll get a chance we'll get out of the car and take photos if we want we'll just record it from a distance because some of them are private property so and you know Namibians are a bit reserved so you cannot just go and walk to someone's home and start taking photos so but we'll ensure that we show you as much as we can so yeah let's do a city tour and then we'll see how we can access the ocean this place has very nice architecture look at that this is very beautiful this is very very beautiful this is a crystal gallery i'm hoping to get in here later it's where you get to see all kinds of crystals i'm sure it's one of the few that are in the world there's another one there i think there's another building there the police the police station looks really good they have very nice architecture whoa look at this one it looks indian it looks everything a little bit of everything so technically guys i'll just be showing you everything wow so this looks like a mall as well so this must be one of the older buildings as well Behind these houses is the beach. 
so the beach is just very close i love the fact that these people have optimized the palm trees they look really good on the town so this is the museum uh, we've been to other museums back in in vindu and it was free of charge. I think we should find out if it's free of charge here too. So right outside the museum is a children's park. I think it's free of charge. And then there's a jetty. Behind it there is the lighthouse. So everything is just within one place. So if you want to get to the museum, these are some of the rates. It's quite fair. Look at the nature It's surrounded. I love the architecture and then it's surrounded by some palm trees. So there is kayaking here, these are the prices. Which town does this place remind you? Uh, Mosul Bay. You think? A little bit of Mosul Bay and which other town? Uh, Port Elizabeth. Yeah, Port Elizabeth. Yes. It's very similar to Port Elizabeth. Yeah, sure. Turquoise blue water, clear as crystal. Look at that. This is now what we call turquoise blue water. You see the way it's clear, it's so clean. This place has a lot of similarities with Port Elizabeth for sure. And it's cold by the way, right now it's around 20 degrees Celsius. The way we were told that you can experience five seasons, five uh, seasons in a day, it's true. It's very cold. This bumps. It's quite cold. Now, Jen had carried her swimming costume. She's the only one who carried the swimming costume. And she didn't tell the rest of us. She wanted to be sneaky. And then the weather did that thing to her. I thought everyone else was carrying their costume. But now, no, you asked me. The <laughs> no, you are saying I'm in the Kamati of Rochafu. <laughs> no. Most of those buildings behind there are hotels and restaurants. As we were passing through that route there, just next to the museum, you could see they put the menu outside. <clears throat> they put the menu of the food they are serving for breakfast, for lunch, and supper just on some some board, chalk chalkboard. So you can just get in and have your meal.
So that Maybe is quartz. quartz. Yeah. And these ones are quartz. quartz. And then the green ones are? The green ones are can, uh, uh, the, the fluorite. Topaz are which ones? Topaz is this one. This one is topaz. Okay, I don't think I'll ever understand. How about the black ones? Black one is black tomalin. Oh. Yeah. So they are they are squirrels they are name. They, they are named that one. They are coming. Okay. Oh, so there's an inter oh maybe I should read the book. Back <laughs> to the outside. side. Mm -hmm. Then you will see the big mountain. Oh. The one. So it just has two. The long one from the long one. to carry pep. Ah. So it has a very very big big. It's a big, big, big mountain, and it can also contain the big things, oh. like bigger ones, even bigger than me, also. Okay. Yeah. Right opposite the museum is the lighthouse, and as I told you guys, in Mosul Bay, I managed to get into the top part, the highest peak there, and I've never looked at lighthouse the same way. So this is a very nice place to take photos could come and just take a photo here i believe that they just works the same way as the other one going to drive next to the beach let's go to the beach eat the building behind that here is called EA boutique guest house let me tell you Maina if architecture was a person <laughs> How do you like the coast? So beautiful. Beautiful but very windy. Very windy, very cold. Very cold. Uh, you, <laughs> yes. you need to carry a sweater when you're here. Bye bye the EA boutique guest house. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yes. Take away from that particular shop there. It's called a truck, a food truck. Adi, what did you did you did you order? I ordered chicken wrap. Uh -huh. And it's magical. Uh -huh. um, so the fork is called the fork what? The fork. Jen. Mm, calamari wrap. Uh -huh. It's so yummy. 
I also had calamari wrap. I was trying to <laughs> so here's my calamari wrap. It looks looks good. Let me try it. I'm telling you. Consider swap up moon as your unique destination. Yes, as your honeymoon destination. Stop going to cliche places. <laughs> This place is very similar to Port Elizabeth because you can just see how everything is constructed along the um, along the beach. There are so many stops. There is even a gym, not gym, but gym equipment somewhere. The outdoor gym equipment. There are places to to sit and rest. There are pavements to just walk. The palm trees are also well maintained. And then there is this tree. There's this flower. I don't know if it is the one that looks similar to the to the national flower or national plant, but it just it just looks really good. Wow! Look at all this architecture. What? It's such a creative mind. It has a mixture of old old unique buildings, new designs, mm -hmm. a mixture of Germanic and. Just modern creative designs. Wow. Everyone kept telling us to come to Swakomund, but we thought it's because of the sand dunes. We didn't think the city, the town looks this good, but I'm actually amazed. If you come to Namibia, don't pass out on the on Swakomund. It's a very beautiful place, especially if you love photos like me. You'll be at home here. So we finished the hotels. These are now private homes. They look like very beautiful apartments. With a sea view. Yes. After traveling to the southern part of Africa, all I can tell you guys is work hard, have money. <laughs> <laughs> Let nobody tell you that money is bad. Money is good. Money is good. Huh? I'm for these people that don't have money. People who don't have money always say money is bad. The problem is not the money, the problem is how you use the money and if you allow money to... And it, it, I think the problem is how you use the money and if you allow ma money to be like the center of your life. Like you lose humanity, you start looking at people who don't have money as nothing. That is the problem. So this mall is quite big and very beautiful but there are very few people i don't know why but we've also looked in some some clothing shop the fares are the prices are fair they're not as extreme as the what we saw in cape town the prices are fair even though i've not bought anything i did not see anything that would make me buy i'm very choosy so at least you've seen the mall you've seen the real estate you've seen the city now uh, just one thing left for me there is the pier and the crystal museum and then we go to the to the sand dunes so let's continue the buildings here they are very similar to what we saw in um, it's called what Kepagulhas. 
rivers. They were very similar and all of them were holiday homes. Just imagine. If you don't know what holiday homes is, it means maybe Airbnb. Yes, like Airbnb, bed and breakfast, self-catering houses. I believe this is how you you find them so this is a crystal cave with so many crystals embedded on the walls right now there are walls but it could have been a cave somewhere or in a mountain somewhere so this is just an illustration of the same i really wonder if in reality there can be so many can be found in one place these are too many and two huge ones I'll just uh, assume that they, it's just an illustration. But they've really done a good work. So these ones are dark ones. So they have particular names. They are quads, they are topaz and all that. I'm not very sure which is which, but it's something I'm willing to go and study so that I can know more about. So I'm told there's a mountain in Namibia, somewhere very close to Swakomun, where, all, where these crystals are mined. When you come in, you pay 30 Namibian dollars. The main reason why I came here is that there is this, the world's largest quartz crystal cluster on this plane. Look at that. Oh my god, let me just move behind so that you guys can see. So big. This sculpture is made out of crystals. Jewel mines. Right behind me is the largest crystal in the world. It's like a cluster of pieces. It's the land. It's as tall as a, as the world. There are so many huge crystals here. Do not touch. This is my favorite. No right is a culture of flora. So the purple ones are called citron. Just how beautiful can yeah. look at that. You can just pause this page, this page or this uh, part of the video and just read because I'm also learning. Just like you, I'm learning about the crystals. Now this one is the most interesting one with so many colors. It's called Peter site or something. It's very unique because it's just unique to Namibia. This particular one. It is what Namibia is known for because it's mostly found in Namibia and not any other countries. Or maybe they are just very few in other countries. But it's majorly found in Namibia. That is why it is called Namibian Peter site. So guys, I've seen <laughs> all kinds of crystals. Uh, I, I used to watch some some series on on TV about the prospectors and how they mine crystals and different different kinds of stones. And they would get like very tiny ones in very like tiny pockets in very different places. They would even dig for days and days and get nothing. Now, you see the very huge crystals that I've seen today imagine they came from i'm told the the attendant told me that they came from one farm very huge ones it's one of those towns on your while you're coming to so, 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 
it's in one of those towns just the, one of those tiny towns it was just found in one farm that was so amazing now the largest crystal in the world is 14 tons weight its height is as tall as a wall it's so huge hey it was a privilege to see it and i've seen different kinds of crystals and i'm seriously going now to study about them because it's just an eye opener i've seen the green ones the blue ones the, the red ones the yellow ones even i've forgotten all the names i know there is toppers there is quads so when you hey, I, okay i'm horrible with names when you come to Swag, swako please ensure you just go to that uh, gallery it's called crystal gallery it's one is the first one i've ever been to now I'll be, i'm more interested the next time I, ca I go to a town or a city and i found one i find one i must go and check it out it's just beautiful it's just nature's beauty so that is one of the things you can do when you come to this town other than the beauty you see in the buildings and the people and everything even delicious food there's that gallery up there you learn new things every day and this was my chance to learn about crystals so let's continue with our journey we are still exploring this town and there are a few more things we, we might do or we might not because it's a bit late it's around 5 10 so we have very f we like we have like maybe an hour or two to leave this town we are going back to Vin vinduk or vintuk so you can understand the agency so let's go Welcome to Dune 7. You can see that you can go by. There is a restaurant, there is an boarding, and there is their cold drinks. So we just follow, we've been following the Google map. We just put there Dune 7, and here we are. There are two routes. You can either use the route that we used. There's another one where you go, you pass through. It's called Walvis Bay. Yes. Yes. I hope we are hoping that we'll pass by there in good time. But I'm excited to go up the dune. In my life, I've been to two, to, to sand dunes in two places. One in Lamu, one in Mamrui. Mamrui is in Malindi. 
So this um, I believe this is going to be the biggest I've ever been to. Wah. Dune 7, the tallest dune I have ever seen, and Pearl is there. Yeah! Oh, this is history. This is history. Do you have you seen the clearance of this car? We are here. We are here to climb up there and walk all the way and roll in sand. Look at this ladies, they are saying that my mother is saying you are my leader. Why will you allow your money? To stop your reggae. Oh, Jesus. I am exhausted. I know I'm almost at the tip, but then I'm tired, I'm panting, I'm out of breath. Well, look at how beautiful this place is. Let no one lie, lie to you. Getting up this sand dune is an extreme athletics. It's extreme tax. What is task? Even even the lusungu has disappeared. Adi amka. No, I'm not giving up. I'm just just take it as a gym, as a lesson. Just breathing a little. It's like climbing how many steps? This is a lot, especially because of the climbing. <laughs> I'm literally on the sand. This is too much. <laughs> I was laughing at a deer, but mm -mm. it's too steep. By the idea, it's too steep here. But it's a, bit a beautiful view up here. Yeah, but you need to go further. I'll go. Yeah. Huh? I meant for this. Why is yes what I because it's sorry. Just look at the way sand in a
go to the top. Look at that beautiful sunset. Yes, that there, there goes the sunset. <laughs> This is so much fun. The sand is so warm. Everybody has their stuff. Oh no. We will be heading towards Zambia border and then we will go all the way to Malawi, our ninth country. So guys, stay tuned for more episodes. And if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. Please consider subscribing to the channel, like the video and comment below on what you think of the journey so far. Until the next episode, guys. Bye.